Good evening and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today I'm going to do a, a quick little preview of uh, the Index Card RPG, um, second edition from uh, Runehammer Games. And I've been hearing about this game for quite some time and I'm familiar with the artist Runehammer from some of the work that he has done um, with uh, Bloat Games and a lot of the, those series of, uh, of titles that uh, Bloat Games has uh, produced. So I've um, been on my radar for quite some time and uh, I, I decided uh, let me you know go in and uh, pick up the soft cover. So you can pick this up on drive through RPG for uh, $30. Uh, that includes all the PDFs and there are a slew of PDFs along with this which I will actually show you. But, uh, you know, I, I always like to get the get the physical copy now uh, and uh, and not just PDFs. I really don't prefer to get my RPGs in, in PDF only. So uh, anytime I do get a chance to pick them up in soft cover, I certainly do so. So uh, this game is kind of unique. It's a little bit different than than some of the others. That I have and and so that's another reason why I wanted to get this is because I, I like to look at uh, different systems or new systems or, or just systems that I'm not very familiar with and so uh, you know when I saw this I was like well let me see what this is all about uh, index card RPG so without further ado let's jump right into the uh, let's jump right into the PDF now as I said, there was there was a whole bunch in the uh, you know a whole bunch of items in the package of PDFs that came along with this, and one of them was the uh, the Quick Start for Second Edition. So here you can see the Quick Start for Second Edition, and uh, I will make this a little bit larger. So the Quick Start is still 81 pages long, so that's really quite an in-depth quick start uh, guide for the uh, you know for the game system and and then the particular um, modifications that came along with second edition so we will spend a little bit of time just taking a look at the quick start and just look at the contents here so um, we can be heroes uh, character basics so the sheet uh, what world is this? Uh, who and what and where am I? Then core stats, st uh, status info, mastery, abilities, powers, and augments, loot. Um, Alphine characters, uh, spells, warp shell characters, sort of different types of character types. I think one is like more fantasy based, uh, magic based. And then the other, the warp shell characters are more technology based. And all the way up through page basically 75, um, or actually 76, all that's out there and character sheet. So, I've never actually seen his name written out. Uh, Hankerin Faramale, I guess. Uh, but his artwork is you know, very noticeable. You, he has a, a, a very unique style of art, uh, one that I'm really a fan of. So what you need here, uh, they go into... You basically need pen and paper, the inevitable notebook, uh, notable polyhedrons, basically your seven, your seven uh, different types of die, maps and minis. <coughs> uh, let's see the wizard lock introduction. All right, so the Index Card RPG spans many different worlds. The more you explore as a game master or player, the more that these worlds threaten to overlap. The Wizard's Lock gives you a means to do just that. A lock in Alfheim may link to an energy portal in Warp Shell. 
Monster Maker. The arcane energy being tapped by these strange glyphs has a tendency to twist nearby creatures into terrible forms. Find the lock, destroy it, and rid one rid one more town of its hellish menace. Coveted by evil, evil forces always seek to conceal and control a wizard's lock for their uh, devious plans in any story that seems one source of uh, delivery can later be revealed as a wizard lock. There's no telling where they'll turn up and nasties won't be far. All right, so index cards. Before we dive into the core system, you might be wondering why in the Nine Hells this RPG is named after the humble index card. There is no drama in these little bits of paper no excitement, no fantasy. I mean, they're index cards for crying out loud. For reasons that will become ever more apparent, you'll see that index card is a metaphor for an entire way of thinking. Your ideas are delivered in small digestible bits. You will treasure memorization over book checking. You will divide your game into tasty little packages. Most of all, you'll be able to create, organize, and execute on the fly as the wacky action of a good RPG session unfolds. Here's why they earn the title spot. Humble origins and many, and many years of gaming that led to this system. No one tool was more clutch for me as a game master. I use them like crazy. Let's talk about index cards. Uh, creative kick. Ever draw a complete blank on uh, preparing a, se a session or creating a new monster? Stack up cards with random drawings, shuffle and pull a few. It's like a tarot for GMs. Interpret and get going. All right, so monsters, nothing organizes your monsters for a session better than index cards. Terrain and distance, with a sharpie at the ready, you can improve bridges, walls, doorways, and more with a few quick lines. When you really start to embrace this, the cards themselves measure distance in your worlds. Loot, draw the magic sword on a card, a mark, uh, mark down the stats, and hand it to the player who just unlocked the rusty old chest. It's great. Everything so so basically it's a it's an interchange of index cards uh, throughout the uh, throughout the session in order to generate the the story and 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 the challenges and such that the players uh, will encounter and then also loot cards as well. Effort dice, defenses, stat supply. All right, let's see. We'll go into the core system here. When the dice start rolling. Sometimes during play, things are feeling loose and narrative. Story is being told, silly accents are being used, or maybe you and your chums are arguing how to best dispatch the hill giant. The GM may be leaning back, eating chips, and grinning with sinister patience, or still using turns to keep everyone sharing the spotlight. When this happens, dice don't have much to contribute. Then all hell breaks loose. Fishmen attack your boat. The hill giant comes crashing into town. Cosmic rays bombard the space station. Time becomes terribly limited. Danger is everywhere. And no mere words are getting out. Are you out of this alive? It's time for action on your turn and a dice roll to see what happens. So first thing you're going to do is describe it. I am going to attack the skeleton. I'm going to leap over that chasm. I will force the airlock open. 
Roll the bones. Roll a d20 plus your strength stat to beat a 13. All right, that is to attack the skeleton. Roll a d20 plus dex against a 15. That is to leap over the chasm. Or there's a 50-50 chance, roll a d6 for me. Uh, I will force the airlock open, I guess there. That's how they line up. Get results based on the outcome of your roll. You and your GM will both describe how things change according to your success or failure. Boom, you smashed the skeleton. I made it. I go flying over the gap or, oh no, a one. The airlock is jammed shut. So action only, you're going to roll. Move near and action, you're going to roll. Move far, uh, apparently no roll. Examples of common term. Checks are d20 plus stat. Meet or beat the target. Simple actions, auto success, no roll needed. Or attempts, which are meet or beat the target plus roll for effort. Target. Time for the nuts and bolts of making successful checks and attempts. In ICRPG, all the rolls in a scene are rolled against a single all-powerful number, the target. Whether it is to hit an enemy, the difficulty of scouting in heavy fog, or the cryptic symbols of a dead language, in one scene there is only one target, and all the rolls must meet or beat that number to succeed. The target is usually somewhere between 10 and 18. GMs can find out more about setting and modifying targets on page 69. All right, so essentially almost anything that you're looking to do, the DM is going to set a, uh, a target number in which you have to uh, meet or beat in order to be successful in what you're doing. Okay, seems to be fairly simple. So when a roll is hard, meet or beat the target plus three. So 12 plus three, you'd have to hit a, uh, a 15 in that case. When it is easy, meet or beat a target minus three. So a 12 now is going to be a minus three. So you'd only need to roll on a d20 of a nine. Uh, in order to meet or beat that. Rolling for effort. Let's see what this is about. One of the core innovations in ICRPG is the concept of effort. Effort simplifies and consolidates all kinds of variations in the outcome of your success. Attempt rolls. Not only does it classify types of outcomes into easy, clear dice categories. It, tends, uh, it lends new detail to tasks that aren't just doing damage. Once you have a success attempt, it's time to roll effort. Basic. If you're only using your bare hands or your wits, roll a d4 after a successful attempt to do damage with a punch. Bend bars, roll, um, with a raw mop muscle, or take time to decipher or block a code of writing. Weapons and tools, you're going to use a D6. Guns, you are going to use a D8. Magic and energy, you're going to use a D10. And ultimately, you'll use a D12 when you roll a critical success on an attempt, a natural 20 on a D20 roll, you'll roll the type of effort above that fits and add a d20 on top of that roll, a d12, I'm sorry, on top of that roll, having succeeded. All right, so let's see. Hearts and effort. 
as you just noticed reading about effort dice you will be rolling against all kinds of tasks with effort not just rolling damage anything that can't be accomplished in an instant will need effort to complete once you get your head around this you'll see how versatile the system really is and how it encourages all kinds of play beyond just doing damage. How much effort do you need to complete a task or destroy an enemy? That is where the hearts come in. Rolling effort, hearts equals 10. Just like the video games of yesteryear, ICRPG uses hearts to show how many hit points an enemy has or how much effort is needed to overcome a task. One heart is equal to 10 points of effort or damage needed. It's an arbitrary symbol to make the numbers distinct and easy to look at. Okay. Um, using a sword attacking a monster with two hearts, do 20 points of damage. With a d6 weapon, die to be victorious. Using a magical translation spell to decode one heart of ancient runes, you need to roll a total of 10 with your d10 magic die. It could be done in one turn. Okay, so they kind of just set the, the challenge level. Uh, or the number of the number of hearts sets how long it might take you to complete a task. So if something has three hearts and, and hit points, basically it's going to take 30 damage in order to defeat that creature. If it only has one heart of hit points, then it only takes 10. Out of range time can be simple to turns rounds and free form a turn is 10 to 20 seconds of action a round is when every player at the table including the DM has taken a turn that is one round okay all right uh, when you reach zero hit points Your character drops unconscious, all spells or effects you are creating vanishes, and you're bleeding out fast. The clock is ticking on your life. Roll for die, dying. On your next turn that you drop to zero, roll a d4, pray you roll high, because in that many rounds, without help or a miracle, your character will die with a capital D. It's a miracle. On each of your turns while you're dying, you get a very narrow chance to miraculously regain consciousness. Roll a d20. If it's a natural 20, some miracle of anatomy has brought you back to awake with one hit point. It's a miracle. Nope, he's dead for real. If all your dying rounds pass, no one helps you, you can't roll a miracle, you are dead. No more rolls, no backdoor tricks. Your toast. Blowing to bits. One last thing. If you take so much damage in one cataclysmic instant to reduce your character to negative 20, you are blown to bits. You're just mist and memories. And there isn't even a body to bury. Okay. Recovery. We're going to recovery system. Healing and first aid. The legendary hero coin. Here are the rules for converting a hero coin once granted by the DM. You can only have one hero coin at a time, no hoarding. Turn your hero coin into a reroll. Turn your hero coin to add a d12 to any die roll. Or you can give your hero coin to another player at any time during play. 
Okay, so it's very similar to like a luck point. All right, this is a, looks like it's a setup for a scenario, which I will spend time with that later. All right. Um, probably in the, in the next video, I will deal with, uh, let's just see real quick. So a setup, a night of chaos. You are a prisoner in the Grey Hill complex. You have no memory of anything else beyond the needles, the experiments, the concrete, uh, wherever or uh, whoever they are. They are using arcane machines and glowing glue to make you a super weapon. It's just might work. That's when the fire breaks out of time. So everything in this room you can see is going to be set at a 10 target. So that means, uh, if I'm understanding the system correctly, that means that um, every action you look to do inside this room, whether it be attacking something or doing something, searching for something, everything is going to be set at a 10. Escape the fire. As flames consume deep block, you must escape your cell or be burned alive. Roll a d4. You have that many rounds to break out of the cell with your bare hands. Do one heart of basic effort against a target 10 to break free. Defeat weapon 13. In the courtyard, an abomination has been deployed to detain you. There is no avoiding it. Time to fight. Jagged steel in your hand. You have one heart HP. Your weapon 13 also has one heart HP. You attack with your we uh, weapon effort. It fights back to basics. Efforts attack per turn. Kill or be killed. Flee in the dark. Sprint through the forest beyond the gray hill and vanish into the shadows. If you don't escape, no one will live to make them pay. Roll a d4. That many guards armed with piercing bright lanterns are searching for you. For each guard, make one successful check to stay hidden. For each failure, face one guard with your ragged weapon. Guards have one heart HP and also fight with weapon effort, launching a single attack against you on their turn. Did you escape the hill infer uh, hill, uh, Gray Hill Inferno? If so, take a hero coin, you've earned it. All right, so very, very simple scenario. Um, basically, three different challenges going on here and, um, and everything set at a base roll, uh, target roll of a 10 on a d20 uh, with various modifiers that you can see here uh, as far as the number of chances that you'll get. Uh, you're rolling d4s for the efforts in all cases. And if we go back to a d4 effort that is described as basic. All right, so if you're only using your bare hands or your wits, roll a d4 after a success attempt to do damage with a punch, bend bars with muscle, or take time to decipher blocks. So everything set there was, was under uh, a d4 roll uh, for your efforts. Okay. Uh, just wanted to show you a few other things here. So um, that's the quick start rules. Here's the core rule book, and uh, now you're up to 216 pages for the full, the full length version of this. Looks like almost all of it is the same up through where I had gone through. Uh, we have the world primers, uh, which is added into this here and we didn't get to all of this. So once I have gone through the major portions of the quick start, 
I will then switch over to this here. I also want to show you the character sheet. So character sheet is very, very simple. Um, so you have your, your common strength, dexterity, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma with its modifiers. Uh, you have an armor class. You have your basic work, um, your damage, your magic effects, your ultimate, uh, if any, the number of hearts that you uh, normally have. Your equipment, your carry gear, and your coin. So very, very simple. Now, if I go back to here, you'll see that these are all of the PDFs. Uh, and I can't enlarge this here, but you have the character sheet in PDF. You have assets in a zip file. You have um, the core player um, play in print in PDF. Let's, let's take a look and, and see what this is. This might just be the assets, but in PDF form. So we will take a look at this. Yes, it is. It's uh, it's your little um, your counters that you can use. There's actually quite a few of them. Yeah, that's a lot. Thirty-seven pages of counters so tons and tons of counters and materials in here let's see what else we have um, magic minis we have them um, very same what is this a uh, PDF mobile so this is 47 pages I'm not quite sure what this is. It might just be a, a shorter version of the of even the quick start. Kind of a very basic game. Um, but anyway, so so as you can see, I mean there there's quite a lot in there and um, I said for th for thirty dollars, you're you're getting the the soft cover plus all of those PDFs, and and there there seems to be a whole lot to this system. I was just going through the 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 quick start um, of second edition, so there's there's a huge amount of detail that's that's to come in the full version, which I'll pick up in the next video. Uh, of this series. So once again, thanks for joining. And um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you uh, have any questions or comments about it, uh, please leave those in the uh, comments section. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen sometime soon. Uh, maybe it'll be to maybe run a session, uh, a one shot using uh, the Index Card RPG 2nd Edition from Runehammer Games. So once again, have a great weekend and uh, look forward to seeing you stay healthy and safe out there and take care.